Good morning. Hey, what do you say we start the day out with a couple of random things to be happy about? Cable car rides, beach lunches, secret caves. When I was a kid, we had caves near where I lived. I, I grew up in outside of Denver in this town called Lakewood, and outside of there was a town real close to us called Morrison, and that's where Red Rocks is. It's a big, huge amphitheater. They have concerts there, and so when I was a kid, we used to go explore around there. They had these like huge, huge boulders stacked. I don't think it was intentional. I think it was just nature. <laughs> but the, it made caves and you would crawl through these and it was just it was really creepy and scary and exciting to kind of We would go spelunking in this huge huge pile of boulders, which were really caves You could also climb up behind the amphitheater. You can't do that anymore. They got it all closed off <laughs> But when I was a teenager we could climb up in there and there's a cave on the side of the amphitheater And you could come in through the back way and you could climb right up to that and look over the edge And I have I think ever since then I've always had like a little bit of a acrobatic Phobia, that fear of heights, man. I, I ooh, just thinking about looking over that edge now just kind of makes me a little nervous. Hey, the weather has cooled off a little bit. We've had a bit of a heat wave the last couple of days. We get those maybe once or twice a year. Usually it's pretty temperate here, but it's a good time for me to do a little bit of work outside. I want to show you my garden shed doors. So this is going into my backyard. This is just a little area we haven't really decided what to do with it yet. This used to, we used to have a pond down here, but it just took too much effort to maintain it. And I built the waterfall here. It, would come, it was really cool. And then I built these steps years ago. But just this year, my wife put these bricks all around here and made these two raised planter beds. And now we've got tomatoes growing in those. When she was building those, I thought she was building like shallow graves or something, but turned out not. Anyway, over here, let me brighten this up. This is the back of my shop. So this is the garden shed here that just extends out that far. But here's the problem. You can see that you might remember me when I built these doors. And <laughs> yeah, those are pretty warped. I like the little handle though. That works out pretty Look at this. So basically these things are just a mess and a lot of it has to do with probably just the way I constructed them I could probably improve on that a little bit. I'm going to design something new that for one thing I don't need these two by sixes. That's what I used for all of this. It's just way too heavy and then I, I inset these plywood panels. So I've got a different way in mind that'll be lighter and I think shouldn't warp. Like always, I want to start out with a SketchUp design so I'll know all of the dimensions and I'll know how much lumber I need to pick up. Well, here's a nice thing is that I was able to pull up my plans from 2015. So at least I can use this for all of the dimensions. That'll save me some time. As I came out here to double check these measurements, I got to looking closer at these doors and really this is the only one that's warped and it's only this particular board right there that's causing this entire door to be warped because this one is actually pretty straight. So, I mean, I guess really I could just repair this door by removing that panel, but I think I just want to make some new doors anyways and make them lighter and I think they look nicer. You want to see another older project? Do you remember these compost bins? Well, I've had a few years with them now, and I absolutely love composting. This is one we alternate them year to year. This is the current one that we're working on. But these things were just way too big for the amount of composting that we do. I mean, we really never get this thing filled up any more than, well, basically where it is now. We just don't produce that much waste. So one of the things I'd like to do eventually is make some new compost bins here much, much smaller. And some other things that I've learned about these that you don't really need is we didn't, we certainly didn't need the lids on it and all of the wire mesh wasn't really important. I was thinking to keep like vermin out of them, but the only thing I've noticed is sometimes some avocado peels will be pulled out and sitting on the ground out here, but that's the only thing I've ever noticed pulled out of there. All right, here's what I've come up with and this is gonna be a much lighter door. So what I'm using here are 
one by four boards. These are three and a half inches wide. And then I put in a couple of cross braces here to help keep this from twisting. So that's gonna be the basic frame. And on top of that, I'm gonna attach this board, which will just either be plywood or maybe OSB. I haven't really figured out what I want that to be yet, but that's just a quarter inch thick. This will also help keep it stable. And then on top of all of that, I'm gonna add the trim. This is the outside trim, also using more of that one by four lumber from the back side, but the top one here will be bigger with just a little bit of a design detail. And this also overhangs a little bit on one of the doors, just creating this little lip that will fit inside of the opposite door just to keep them closed. And that lip will also help conceal the gap between the two doors, especially if they shrink a little bit. What I noticed on these doors, granted this was made with really wet lumber, is that the door on the right shrunk three quarters of an inch and the one on the left, the one that's warped, didn't really seem to shrink all that much side to side. So with dry lumber, I shouldn't experience too much contraction of that lumber in that direction. But I think I've got a working plan here. Now what I need to do is just figure out how much lumber I need and then go get it. But right now it's almost noon and that means it's time for my workout. As I got to looking at these plans, I realized that I don't think this is gonna work by having just that lip on one door because that means on this one, I'd have to have the opposite there and that really doesn't solve any of the problems because there would still be probably a gap there. So I think the solution is to make both of the doors exactly the same and have all the edges flush and then just put a strip along one door. So I think a strip like this ought to do it. Now I just need to figure out how much lumber I'm gonna need for both of these doors. And this is kind of this basic way that I like to make cut list is that I just copy all of the components to a project and then I just slide them over into a kind of a 2D map here and I cut out or I make these pieces here which represent standard length off the shelf boards in other words these are one by fours by eight feet long and as you can tell this is going to take quite a bit of them 14 of those boards plus I'm going to need a wider board over here for those two top pieces and then I've laid out I'll need two full sheets of whatever to cut out that center piece. But luckily one by four boards are pretty inexpensive, so this isn't really that bad. Hey, look at this stuff. This might work out. It's about half inch thick, but I think that's gonna be okay. It's got like a tongue and groove. Looks like you could put a whole bunch of them together. Not really sure, oh, I see that's in the wrong spot. It goes over here. Oh, it's siding. Hey, that'll be perfect. I gotta, gotta do is move all this junk out of the way because, well, you know, it's <laughs> my favorite store. Wait, there's this stuff here, which is like fake wood, but I think that's, that's even better. Hard board, I don't know what it is, but I think that's what I'm gonna get instead. The only thing I don't like back about this is that each of these boards on there is pretty wide compared to these. I like these real narrow ones better, but this is twice as expensive. I guess I'll just go with this stuff. 
It's just a garden shed. So total of all that lumber was $135. I guess all in all, that's not too bad. Although when I was checking out, the guy told me I was standing in the wrong spot. I was trying to help him find the barcode, but that's par for the course at the big box store. <sighs> Oh, I'm so glad to be back. That place is just soul crushing. Well, that's all I can get done today. I'm running out of time. I had a little bit of a delay there. I was getting ready to leave and my wife's car was parked behind my truck, so I needed to move it and the battery's dead. So, so, and I couldn't figure out how to push it because you need the battery on in order to put it into neutral and so, I don't know how to do that. So I managed to worm my truck out, kind of like parallel parking it, but had to have Wyatt move his car, then I was able to get the truck out. So tomorrow I guess we're gonna have it towed up to the dealership so they could put a new battery in. I really don't wanna just put a battery in myself because anytime I deal with something with a car, it just ends up taking me hours. I'm just like the worst mechanic ever. I'd rather have somebody else do it. It's not like we need that car. It's not like we're gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow.